Previously on the Art of Boat Building. Uh, today we're going to talk about the combings for the boat. When we look at it in plan, it is this board that goes all the way back. Well, I'm pretty happy with that fit. The scarf joint is going to be an eight to one scarf. Well, it's been uh, over a 48 hours or so, uh, so this epoxy should be well cured. So we'll bust these out of here and see what we've got. came out pretty good. All of this so will clean off pretty well. well. It looks like they came out pretty nice. Um, so what I'm going to do next now is to put a batten across the top here and get a nice fair curve to it. And then I'm also going to go on the bottom side and get it evened up with the bottom of the share clamp. So that'll be the next thing is to mark those off. And once I get it marked off, then I'm going to trim them off on the uh, big bandsaw.
Well, I think I've got the, uh, the uh, combing pretty fair now. Uh, so the next thing I want to do, instead of having the top edge of this be square, I want to round off those corners. Uh, mainly because this combing will be, when you're sitting in the seat, it'll be behind you and it'll be much more comfortable if they're kind of nice soft uh, curves on there. So the way I'm going to do that is to use a palm router. I've got my palm router all set up with a 3 16 inch roundover bit here and it has a ball bearing guide on here. Now one important thing here is that I stopped short of the end because if I hadn't stopped short of the end then that ball bearing would have wanted to travel around here and I would have uh, rounded off that leading edge. So I always stop short and then I'll finish that off with sandpaper later. In order to seal the boards, I'm putting a thinned down coat of Total Boat Lust on here. Um, and I've thinned it 50%. So 50% thinner and 50% varnish. Um, that's what it recommends on the can for fresh wood. Um, so, you know, whenever in, you're in doubt, read the can. So I'm going to put a coat, one coat of this on it, and then um, we'll see how they fit. By thinning down the varnish, it really helps that first coat penetrate the wood. I've got all of the combing test fitted in here and it seems like it fits very nicely. So before I permanently fasten it in, I want to uh, paint the foredeck, uh, mainly because it goes underneath here and some of the foredeck is out here. Uh, I think it'd be much easier if I got that all painted before I attach this combing down. So that'll be the next step is to get the foredeck all painted. Now because that foredeck is a space that um, one needs to crawl out on there in order to put the jib away and uh, to catch a mooring, uh, there's many times you'll need to be out on that deck. So I've decided that it needs to be a non-skid surface. So in order to accomplish, I'm going to be using Total Tread by Total Boat. And this is a product specifically made uh, as a non-skid surface. And the color that I've chosen is sand beige. 
Now it says on the can here, under the application on the can, it says that total tread should not need to be thinned unless it's warmer than 80 degrees Fahrenheit. And that uh, the paint can be applied with either a roller or a brush. And if we're rolling it, we should use a 1 8 inch nap solvent safe foam roller to apply one or two thin coats. So we'll get it stirred up. You can see that it's nice consistency. So I have here a uh, little 1 8 inch foam roller like it suggested on the can. So we'll get this in our tray and get painting. I've been getting a lot of questions lately about what's going to happen once the boat's finished and how long is it going to take? Well, something came in the mail today that will help answer that question. Well, if this is what I think it is, and I hope it is, is, let's see, we've got something from PMC Supplies. Exactly what I thought it'd be. This is a small crucible so that we can get a foundry built and do some bronze castings. Let me show you what the plans show about what castings need to be done. So we can see over here uh, on sheet six of the plans, this whole section in here uh, takes up patterns for the bronze work. So we've got uh, Orlock sockets, we've got some gooseneck pieces here, some boom plates, um, the gudgeon and pinion pieces for the rudder, uh, the mast boom, we have the mast partner, which will be a two-piece part there. Uh, also have pieces for the traveler ends. So all of these bronze pieces will need to have patterns made before we can cast them. Now I spent many years in my early part of my career teaching bronze casting at the art school. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to build a small little furnace in order to melt bronze and that's what that crucible will be for. Uh, in addition to that there's some other foundry tools that I'll need to fabricate like some tongs and some things like that. So we'll take a little bit of a deviation away from the boat for uh, several episodes in getting prepared for the bronze casting and then we're going to go through that whole process. Now once we have all those bronze castings done we can then use those to build all of the spars and the uh, booms up here. Uh, 
I'll probably be working on part of them at the same time, so we'll mix it up a little bit, so there'll be a little bit of work on the boat and uh, quite a bit of work on the foundry. So to really answer the question about how long this is going to take, uh, the wooden boat show is on August 20th, the weekend of August 20th. So my goal is to have the boat finished by that point so that I can take it out to the boat show. So you can see we've got pretty much all summer that will continue to work on the Haven. Well, in addition to the bronze castings, there's quite a few other tasks that I need to accomplish. One of which would be finishing up the inside of the cockpit, which would include the installation of the seats and a little bit of trim. I'll also need to make the rudder and install the centerboard trunk. As I had mentioned, I'll need to make the mast and spars and the boom. And I'll also need to make the sails and do all of the rigging. So as you can see, there's quite a few things that need to be accomplished before the end of August. So I better get busy installing that combing. For the fore end of the combing where the starboard and the port meet, I fashioned a walnut block uh, using the same 130 degrees and uh, 19 degrees on the bottom here so that that will sit in there to uh, hold the, where the two combings will come together like that. So the way that I attached the uh, centerpiece here is I used a strap to go from one chain plate to the other. And that clamp, this clamp here is to hold the clamp from sliding it because it's on an angle, it wanted to slide up underneath there. Um, and then this one just helps hold the top end tight. So I epoxied this all in and because the deck beam is right under the tip of this, it meant that the back side of this went a little farther than the um, deck beam. So I was able to put two screws up into the bottom of this, some bronze screws. And then I epoxied it all together. Well, now that I've got this all glued up, I can now attach the sides. Now that I've got the combings all clamped in place, I'm going along and I'm putting some uh, number eight, one inch long bronze screws flathead screws in here. And I'm doing that about every 16 inches or so. Now, uh, my tapered bit here, not only does it um, have a counter sink on it, but it also has a counter bore, which is very important so that we can put a uh, bung in the hole here 
uh, when we're done. I've got the drill press all set up in order to uh, cut some bungs. Now there are a couple of different kind of plug cutters that you can get. And I have two different style ones here. One has four cutters and one has two. And I would not recommend getting this type of cutter. They just don't do a very good job. But these four uh, pronged ones cut really good. And one of the things that's important about it is down at the bottom, it rounds, has a rounded bottom to it. So that'll make our bung have a little bit of a rounded uh, crown on it, which makes it go into that hole very easily. So I have a 3 8 cutter here in the drill press, so I'm going to start cutting some bungs. using just a little dab of tight bond glue on there. And the important thing here is to get the grain orientation running the same direction as the combing. Yeah, that's it. So we'll let those sit overnight and come back in the morning and trim them off. And now that the glue has all dried on these bungs, I'm going through with my small pull saw here and cutting them off. And once I get it cut off, I'm then hitting it a little bit with uh, 120 grit sandpaper. And after 120, I hit it with a little 220. And then move on down the line. Once I got all of the uh, bungs smoothed down, uh, I'm now going over and sanding the um, combing with uh, 220 grit in preparation for some varnish. I'm putting the fourth coat of varnish on right now and ultimately I hope to put eight to ten coats on the combing. 
So that's pretty much it for this episode. Uh, as always, thanks for watching, and I'll see you the next time on The Art of Boat Building.